Psalm 117. I'm going to read the whole chapter. O oh, praise the Lord, O ye nations. Praise him, all ye people. For his merciful kindness is great toward us. And the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for your presence. Lord, we ask for your presence. We've been seeking your presence. Lord, we're sure glad that you made known your presence in our midst this morning thus far. Thank you for good Sunday school hour. Thank you for the good report of good jail services. Thank you for good choir singing. Thank you for good special singing, good testimonies. Lord, thank you for being a good God. We're without excuse not to praise you. Lord, we bless your name. Now, Lord, we're trying our best to mind the Lord. We thank you for arranging the atmosphere for worship. We pray you'd bind the powers of hell right now. And God, we certainly pray you'd speak to hearts. I pray, as Brother Ron prayed at the beginning of the service, Lord, if there's somebody in our midst unsaved, lost without the Lord, I pray for Holy Ghost conviction. I pray that, Lord, you'd open their eyes to the fact they're lost, open their eyes to the fact that they need the Savior. And God, I pray today they'd run out of excuses and run into Him. And I pray that they'd call on the Lord and be saved. Lord, I'm thankful that people put their obstacles and their obsessions out of the way for a little while. It's been evident in the service. I pray you'd continue to help people to crucify their flesh and, Lord, to receive the Word of God with gladness. God, I pray that you'd use this unworthy vessel, you'd speak to hearts, and I pray that you'd be glorified in our midst. Help us now, we pray. We're leaning on thee, for it's in thy name we do pray. Amen. Amen. I want to draw your attention to three things from this text. I want you to notice, first of all, the psalmist's call. He says in verse 1, O oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise Him, all ye people. He concludes the psalm with praise ye the Lord. Wouldn't it be wonderful if the nations would heed the call and they'd praise the Lord. Amen. Wouldn't it be wonderful if all the people of God uh, would praise the Lord? Uh, and can I say it'd be wonderful if ye praised the Lord. Amen. We're called to praise Him. Yes. Everything that hath breath ought to praise the Lord. Uh, the Lord's been good to all of us. Uh, the Lord allowed us to get out of bed today. The Lord allowed us to wake up today and still be alive. Uh, uh, the Lord gave us breath for our body. Uh, the Lord gave us strength. Uh, the Lord has blessed us. Uh, we live in nice houses, uh, wear nice clothes, uh, drive nice vehicles, uh, live in a great land, uh, have plenty of food to eat. Uh, God's been good. Uh, he's blessed us. Uh, he's blessed us to hear the word of truth. Uh, he's blessed us to know uh, we needed a Savior uh, and blessed us to know that He was the Savior. Uh, blessed us when we called on Him to save us. Uh, what a Savior. Uh, we ought to praise the Lord today. Uh, the wicked won't praise Him. The complacent won't praise Him. The backsliders won't praise Him. Uh, will you praise Him? There's a call. Notice, if you will, the compassion. Look in verse number 2. For His merciful kindness is great toward us. Can I say God's had compassion on us? He didn't have to have compassion on us, but He loved us. Why He loved us, I don't understand. Can I say He didn't love us after we got saved? Uh, he loved us before we got saved. He loved us when we were in our sins. Uh, 
He loved us when we were filthy, uh, when we were vile, uh, when some of you were laying in your own vomit. He loved you. Uh, when some of you uh, was putting junk in your veins, uh, he loved you. Uh, when some of you uh, were living in adultery, he loved you. Uh, when some of you were fornicators, uh, he loved you. Uh, when some of your mouths were full of cussing uh, and lying, uh, he loved you. Uh, when some of you and all your thoughts uh, were wicked and evil continuously, uh, he loved you. Uh, he showed you uh, great mercy, uh, great kindness. Uh, he's a great God uh, who's had compassion on us. Uh, why wouldn't we want to praise him? Uh, we see the call. We see the compassion. Now notice the Constitution. Verse number 2 it says, And the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Can I say if they confiscate every Bible in the world, His truth endureth forever. If wicked men try to change the Bible, His truth endureth forever. Uh, if men try to deny the Bible, uh, His truth uh, endureth uh, forever. Uh, when false prophets arise uh, and preach false gospels, uh, His truth uh, endureth uh, forever. Uh, I can take refuge uh, in the Constitution uh, of the truth of God. Uh, endureth uh, forever. Uh, it's forever settled uh, in heaven. Uh, he hath uh, magnified it uh, above his holy name. Uh, I uh, am glad uh, to have the truth uh, in my hands uh, and in my heart. Uh, and it endureth forever. Uh, I'm interested this morning. Verse number 2, uh, where he says, For his... Uh, Merciful kindness is great toward us. With God being my helper, I want to preach on His merciful kindness. Amen. We've been singing about His blessings. Yep. We've been singing about His goodness. We've been singing about the half that hadn't been told. Uh, we've been singing about He's our God. Uh, we've been singing about His kindness all morning. I'm going to preach on his merciful kindness. Before I can expound on his merciful kindness, we got to understand what merciful and kindness means. The definition of merciful is this. It means exercising mercy. Well, what is mercy? Mercy is benevolence, which disposes one to overlook injuries or treat an offender better than he deserves. Can I say, uh, when God looked at you and I in our filth and chose to extend mercy, he overlooked what we deserved. He overlooked how our sin injured him on the cross of Calvary uh, and was willing to give us better than what we deserve. Amen. Merciful also means compassionate. Uh, merciful also means to be tender. I'm glad God, and by the way, He is love, but God is also a God of wrath. And Jesus is coming back in the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God. Uh, the Bible says uh, it is a fearful thing uh, to fall into the hands uh, of an angry God. Uh, and listen, uh, God loves us uh, and He loves sinners, uh, but He's angry with the wicked every day. Uh, and God, uh, in His anger, will judge sin one day. Uh, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, when I got saved uh, from my sin, uh, God forgave me of my sin, uh, and I was judged for sin uh, at Calvary. Uh, 
If you're here today and in your sin uh, and you die in your sin, uh, you're going to face an angry God uh, who's going to judge you according to your sin. Uh, but today he has merciful kindness. He's tender towards us even when he was angry at us. Can I say this? Uh, it means uh, disposed to pity an offender and to forgive their offenses, unwilling to punish for injuries. That's mercy. That's being merciful. Mm, Colonel, when he should have punished us, he didn't. He showed pity on us. Uh, we find what merciful means. What does kindness mean? Kindness means goodwill. means benevolence. It means any act which promotes the happiness or welfare of others, which is exercised cheerfully in gratifying their wishes, supplying their wants, or alleviating their distresses. My dear friends, uh, kindness ever accompanies love. His merciful kindness didn't give me what I deserved, uh, right, right. but he took pleasure uh, in gratifying what I needed because he loved me. Hey. Hey. Can I say his merciful kindness is evident? Because first of all, he had pity on me. Yep. That definition of merciful means disposed to pity an offender. Can I say, uh, I was a sinner. I was guilty of sin. I came out of my mother's womb a sinner. Can I say, uh, in my sin I offended God. In my sin I injured the Lord Jesus Christ uh, when he had to go to Calvary to pay for my sin. Uh, hey, as a sinner, uh, my sin was a uh, staunch in the nostrils of God. Uh, my sin, uh, great God regurgitate uh, and repent that he even made man. Uh, but even in my sin, uh, God looked at me uh, in pity uh, and in love. Uh, Brother Ed, uh, he didn't look at you in your vileness and say, uh, throw him off into the lake of fire. Uh, he looked at you uh, and said he deserves to go to the lake of fire. Uh, but I'm going to show him pity uh, because I love him, because uh, he's my creation. Uh, hey, uh, God's merciful kindness is evident because uh, he had pity on me. Uh, I'd have been hell today. Uh, I'd have been the chart reaching unto them, uh, paying for my sin. Uh, but God, uh, in his merciful kindness, uh, had pity on me. Uh, and I'm not in hell. Uh, I'm in the house of God, uh, praising the Lamb of God, because uh, he showed pity on me. Uh, can I say, his merciful kindness is evident because he had pity on me. It's evident because he pardoned me. That definition of mercy and merciful, disposed to pity an offender and to forgive their offenses. Can I say I was guilty? I didn't have a leg to stand on. I was a sinner uh, on the third Saturday night of March 1974. Uh, I realized uh, I was a sinner. I had transgressed the law of God. Uh, I was guilty. Uh, I deserved nothing from God. Uh, I deserved to die in my sin uh, and go to hell. Uh, but that night, uh, I made my way to an old-fashioned altar. Uh, I threw myself on the mercies of God. Uh, I called on the Lord. Uh, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord uh, shall be saved. Uh, that night I called upon him. Uh, he saved me uh, and he forgave me uh, of all my sin, uh, all my past sin, uh, 
all my present sin, uh, all my future sin uh, has been washed in the blood of Jesus uh, and I've been forgiven. Uh, his merciful kindness uh, is evident uh, because though I was guilty, uh, I received a pardon from the King of Kings uh, and my sins uh, have been washed uh, and they're gone. Uh, never to be remembered against me. Oh, what a God. His merciful kindness is evident because he had pity on me, because he pardoned me, and because he didn't punish me. That definition said, uh, unwilling to punish for injuries. Can I say God would have been justified to punish me after he saved me. But he saved me. And he didn't punish me. Uh, I'll never pay for my sins. Because uh, Jesus paid for them at Calvary. Uh, his merciful kindness said, Though I was guilty, uh, though I deserve to be punished, uh, he saved me. Uh, and he took my punishment. Uh, he uh, abhorred my sin. Uh, with his stripes we are healed. Uh, the Lord lay out on him the iniquity of us all. Uh, he took my guilt. Uh, he took my shame. Uh, he took my punishment. Uh, and I was not punished for my offenses. Uh, what merciful kindness. I was the guilty one. He was the punished one. Ah. Uh, he didn't punish me. Brother, Donald, I'm glad he saved you. Out of religion and from religion. Those that don't get saved, even though Jesus was willing to take their punishment because they reject him, they'll have to pay for their own sins forever in the lake of fire. Amen. Amen. Friend, why would you tempt fate and tempt the mercy of God? Amen. Can I say, God's never obligated to ever deal with you on your sin again. Right. I would not tempt His mercy today. Amen. His merciful kindness is evident because He didn't punish me. Not only didn't he punish me, but then he promoted me. Yeah. He not only saved me, yeah. he made me a child yeah. of his family. Hey. He made me a joint heir to the throne of God. He made me a joint heir with Christ. Everything that Christ has in the future, I have. Yeah. Why? Because I'm one with him in Christ. I don't understand it. Miss Brittany, when I got saved that night, the half hadn't been told, I just want to be saved from my sins. Uh, that would have been enough, Miss Barb. Uh, but he saved me, and then he promoted me. Uh, uh, listen, uh, that kindness said goodwill, but evidence any act which promotes uh, the happiness or welfare of others. Uh, listen, uh, he promoted me. Uh, he gave me uh, a better welfare and happiness than I'd ever had in this life. Uh, he gave me joy, peace, goodness, temperance, meekness, the fruits of the Spirit. Uh, the best life you can ever live is the Christian life. Uh, he gave me this life uh, and heaven too. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, I'm in this world, but not of this world. Uh, I'm of a chosen generation, uh, a royal priesthood. Uh, I've been robed in the righteousness of Christ. Uh, and when God looks at me, he sees himself. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but that makes me happy, happy, happy. His merciful kindness is evident because he took pleasure in aiding me. That word kindness says exercise cheerfully in gratifying their wishes, supplying their wants, and alleviating their distresses. 
Can I say the Bible says, for the joy that was set before him, Christ endured the cross. Brother Ron, he despised the shame. When they spit upon him, when they mocked him, after they'd plucked the beard from his face, after they'd platted his head with a crown of thorns, after they'd beaten him with many stripes, uh, after they'd nailed him to the cross, uh, he looked ahead in time, uh, saw you sitting there in that church pew, uh, saw you preaching the word of God. Uh, he said, it's joyful, uh, it's worth it because of the work that'll be done in others. Can I say... Isaiah 53 says the Lord saw the travail of his soul and it pleased him to bruise him. Can I say he took pleasure in doing something for you and I that we could not do for ourselves. That's merciful kindness. Can I say it's evident because he took pleasure in aiding me. Can I say his merciful kindness is evident because he provided for me. It said in gratifying their wishes, in supplying their wants, and alleviating their distresses. Can I say, there's no gratification like knowing you're saved. Can I say, there's nothing like him supplying all of our needs according to Christ Jesus. Can I say, only He can alleviate the pain of the soul. Yes. Oh, my dear friends, there's no provider like God. Yes. David said he'd never seen the righteous forsaken, nor were seed begging bread. Can I say, I'm faring a lot better than I've sown. God's been good to me. I bless the Lord. He's a great provider. And then can I say, his merciful kindness is evident because of his passion toward me. Again, kindness ever accompanies love. God did all those things because he loved us Amen. with an everlasting love. I don't understand it. The Lord's blessed me with three wonderful children I wouldn't have gave any of them for a sinner Lord's blessed me with a beautiful granddaughter I wouldn't give her for nothing but God gave his son for all of us he gave his son the best for the worst to prove that he loved us friend he loves you he loves you in spite of your sin, in spite of your failures, in spite of your obsessions and obstacles, in spite of all your bitterness and wrath and clamor and backbite, in spite of all the junk you deal with, God loves you. And he shows you merciful kindness that neither you or I deserve. No wonder the psalmist concluded this chapter with praise ye the Lord. We're without excuse not to praise him. And Miss Annette's testimony was right. We don't praise him because we don't think on him. If you think on that merciful kindness, you can't help but praise the Lord. He's shown you mercy and kindness just being here today. You know, most of the known world's never even heard the name Jesus Christ. Right. And today, you've been in a service where he's been magnified. Amen. And today, he's let you know you can be a recipient of his mercy and kindness. You say, preacher, I don't know how to be saved. My dear friends, Jesus Christ came and he died for sinners. He was buried and he rose again from the grave, proving he was the Lord. The death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord is the good news, the gospel for sinners. You don't have to die in your sin. You can receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and be a recipient of his merciful kindness. 
but you have to swallow your pride and admit you can't save yourself and admit you need to be saved. And you've got to be willing to turn from your wicked life and turn to Him and ask Him to save you. And if you will, He'll save you. And you will have something to praise the Lord over. Yeah. Because you're a recipient of His merciful kindness. Maybe it's been a while since you praised the Lord because you haven't been looking at his merciful kindness. You've been looking at the circumstances of your life. Maybe you're in a hog pen today. You're in a far country today. And the Lord's trying to draw you back to his house, to his heart. Maybe you need to get up out of that hog pen and get back to the Lord today. Maybe you're just cold and indifferent on God. You're here, but that's it. Maybe today God's touched your heart. Why don't you open it to him and be a recipient of his merciful kindness again. Maybe today he spoke to you about something else. He's just that way. He's so merciful and so kind. He don't have to speak to us. He didn't have to show up today, but he chose to. Today he might have walked by you. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to let the Lord do something in your heart? Or are you going to leave out the same way you came in? I would certainly embrace his mercy and his kindness today. Because just like Bar blind Bartimaeus, he wouldn't let the crowd keep him from Jesus. He wouldn't let the scoffers keep him from Jesus. He cried unto the Lord, and the Lord opened his eyes. But the reality of that whole story in the Bible is that was the last time Jesus went through Jericho. If blind Bartimaeus would have listened to the crowd, listened to his own fears, if he wouldn't have cried out, he'd have died blind. My dear friends, this might be the last time Jesus goes by your way. I'd certainly cry out to him and let him do something in your heart today. His merciful kindness is available. Will you receive it? Can I say that's what salvation is? You receiving him. You receive gifts on your birthday and Christmas. Gifts that other people provided for you. Today God's providing something for you that man can't provide for you. But you've got to receive him. And his name is Jesus. Will you come? Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. While they're picking out a song, let's pray. Father, we bless you. We praise you for your merciful kindness. Lord, we're undeserving but we are very grateful. Now, Father, I don't know anybody's heart in here today. Lord, you know everybody's heart. God, you know who you're dealing with right now. And I pray the sweet Holy Ghost of God would tug at those heartstrings. And I pray that folks would be recipient of the mercy and kindness of Almighty God. Lord, if there's somebody lost in their sin, I pray you'd break them over their sin. Help them realize their future's hell, and hell could be a lot closer than they think. Help them to come and receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe somebody's here, they're saved, but they're so far from God. Lord, they offer all kinds of excuses. They know they're not right with God. Help them, Lord. Come get right with God. Lord, maybe there's somebody here today Lord, they're full of vainglory. They do everything to look good in the eyes of men. With their, work, with their lips they do honor you, but their heart's far from you. I pray they get right with God today and give you the glory. God, maybe there's somebody here today just hurting, needs a little mercy and kindness. God, do a work in this invitation. Help folks to mind you and then praise you with their lips and their lives from this day forward. For your mercy and kindness is great toward us. Bless now, in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.